Well, let me, let me now talk about the training itself. This school was a, was a, was a, was a uh, I didn't know anything about the schools. I didn't know anything about what, what to expect. So I was, I, was, uh, I was completely new at this. The school, when you walked in, it's interesting, when you walked in, uh, the outside windows, it was like, a, like, like most little storefronts in New Jersey places, the, the outside was, uh, was white, white painted over to, to cover the, the windows, and it had uh, kanji and uh, uh, oriental lettering on it. And uh, when you first walked into the door, you opened it up, there was a, uh, a painted piece of plywood, maybe that far from the, the entrance of the door, and on it, it had visitors with an arrow this way, students with an arrow that way. So when you first walk in, you literally see nothing but this big piece of plywood, and, and, and it stops you. And of course, you have to walk kind of sideways to sit in the visitor section, and <laughs> sideways to walk into the student section. Just as, an, uh, as, just as a sidebar on that, that's a, uh, the purpose for that later on when I learned about it was a, that, was a, uh, uh, that was a method to, to uh, check a person's ego at the door and, uh, and to kind of enforce a certain humility on people. It's hard, you know, it's hard, to, be, it's hard to be macho and tough when you're, when you're waddling sideways or either way entering and, and, uh, and leaving. Um, Anyway, after you're a student and you entered, it was a very narrow space. You took off your shoes and socks and you put them a certain way. You, you, the, the shoes were always turned a certain way. Uh, in Japan, when you put your, your shoes, um, when you enter a house, you put your shoes so the, the front of your shoes, the toes are always facing the door. And the, and the uh, theory behind that is that, that that's an indication that the guest is intending to leave. Um, you know, a lot of these little stories you hear, I, I just, I take for granted as being true. Who knows? It's a good story regardless. And, uh, and in the dojo, you put your shoes a certain way, and then you bow toward the, there was, a, there was always, a, it's called a kamiza in Japanese dojos, but the, and they can be elaborate. Uh, when I trained in Japan, they were a little bit more, a little bit more formal, but they can be something as simple as a picture of uh, the founder of the organization, or in particular, the instructor that taught the instructor you are now training under, and uh, and uh, it can have all kinds of things. This it could be embellished with a little a little shelf, or it can have kanji on the sides. It can it can have uh, you know a, a sword, a mirror, a salt. It can have a plant. It just depends. Sometimes uh, the, the Japanese look at American. Dojos and they chuckle at the at the complex nature of our kamiza uh, when when they understand that many of those that put it up may not have uh, a real sense of its uh, of its meaning. But in any case, um, uh, I find no fault with that at all. I you know it's uh, it's it's a certain sense of respect, and uh, whether one understands it or not, you're trying to emulate something that was meaningful to you. So. It does no harm. Uh, in any case, he had a little, this little area where there was a picture and so forth, and uh, and we bowed, entered, walked across the mats, and the dressing room was in the back. Um, the mat area uh, was relatively narrow, uh, like m many places in in the stores in the, up in the northern New Jersey area. They were longer, but very narrow this way. So you had to be. When, when the classes were fuller, you had to be very precise with your falling and rolling, your awareness of those things around you, and, uh, and uh, I mean, it, it, was, it was Spartan. Um, there, was no, there was no air conditioning. <laughs> so, you know, it, it was cold in the winter, and our body heat used to make the windows sweat like crazy. Uh, uh, in the summertime, there'd be you know, almost like pools of sweat on the mats, and there was a little fan on a little folding chair in the corner, uh, and of course the senior belts always lined up uh, up toward the end, uh, and and they were closest to the fan. <laughs> so 
<laughs> we used to, we used to uh, 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 enjoy our, our ability to, to be promoted and move up in rank uh, as we filtered up, getting closer to the fan. Uh, it, it, it sounds a little silly, but uh, at the time it, it seemed like it seemed like progress and uh, and reward to us. Um, you know, there's an old saying that um, American instructors talk too much and Japanese instructors don't talk enough. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I certainly think that uh, when we trained. We trained hard. An explanation was given. Um, he didn't. He didn't tolerate, you know, chatting in the class. You you worked out. You you, you were supposed to. I tell my students, and I, I I never really thought about it later on until I became an instructor myself. But in the beginning, there's a difference between seeing and observing, and there's a difference between hearing and listening. And because, may, I don't know, maybe in those days, we didn't have so many distractions, really. I mean, you know, the, you didn't have all the kinds of extra distractions. Uh, certainly we had no, uh, no phones and iPads, and nobody was doing this all day long. So uh, you paid attention. You were really attentive and watched how was the hand gripped, which way was it pulled, uh, uh, what was the manner in which the roll was, was uh, most effective and and the least hard on your body everything was geared toward this this real focus of concentration and uh, you know I try to keep that in my own schools and and most instructors I know try to do the same thing but it is difficult I know an awful lot of instructors over the years Who've, uh, who've gone from running schools to either doing private classes or, or seminars or any, because they, because it can wear on you. People think, you know, when you open up a school when you're an instructor, that you just turn the key, you walk in, put on the lights, and collect money. Well, uh, I wish it was like that, but it's not. It's a lot of hard work, and if you really enjoy what you're doing and, you're, and your motivation is right, um, you know, students require a lot of nurturing and just like anything else in your life that requires that that requires energy and uh, and sometimes it can be it can be sapping you can be uh, you can be really put to the test when you have students that that demand more than others and and again another common expression is you know uh, 20% of your students require 80% of your attention. Well, I, I, I don't know if that's true exactly, but, uh, but, but it is true that certain students will require that. And other students can come in and they'll be with you for years and they are just like, I mean, like clockwork. You never ask them for payments. Uh, you never have to tell them what, what the process is. They just work hard. So our school, when I was training, was exactly like that. We had the same, those conditions never change. But I will say that overall, I think the expectations of hard work and, and diligence was higher. There was also a greater effort at being a little bit more samurai warrior-like. Um, you know, we're not, we're not talking about modern day MMA. That obviously, to even, to even contemplate that, or full contact, that's how full contact karate came into about. People got got interested in, in going beyond just the point fighting and wanting to have uh, you know a little bit more a little bit more uh, um, a more realistic end uh, to the match that that they felt was more credible in being a uh, a uh, uh, a realistic approach toward uh, competition but in those days a lot of a lot of the students just accept the fact that this was going to be you know there's going to be hard blocks and you're going to be uh, struck and and, uh, and there's going to be hard twists and throws and and a lot of physical activity it was just accepted today it's uh, you know they have a lot of students who come in before they even do anything they're already telling you about about their bad back and their and their sh poor shoulder and the, and the, you know and the motorcycle accident and the other things and it, it just seems to be more prevalent today that there's a that there's an expression of limitation on what people either can do or are willing to do.